Leaders inspire and motivate people. Shake it. An advocate for good. Selfless service. Make it. Leadership solve problems. Change the world. Doesn't shake us. We just had a, a chat with uh, Senior Australian of the Year, uh, Fred Cheney, and uh, now we've got a real territory icon in the studio with us um, and Northern Territory Australian of the Year as well, Shelley Morris. Thank you very much for coming and being with us. Um, now, Shelley, uh, you recently won um, an NT uh, Music Awards uh, for a song that you did with the Bar- Borolula um, song women and um, I guess you discovered music at a very very young age um, and you were trained as an operatic singer Um, but uh, when you were about 29 or so you discovered um, your familial roots uh, up in Darwin Um, tell us a little bit about that and that journey well I was I after finished schooling I I moved to the Hunter Valley um, to uh, kind of just to stay out of trouble because I was a bit lost in Sydney and there were a lot of issues that were very difficult to cope with in Sydney um, regarding my race. So I took off to the country and lived up there and sort of, you know, things were going really well. I was managing a franchise by then and I thought this is my, this is going to be it. You know, I'm going to be, you know, a corporate woman. And one day um, one of the staff members couldn't come in so I was outside doing some detailing. I was working in high car stuff and this man came through the car park and he said, um, how did you beat me? What are you doing here? And I said, oh, pardon? <laughs> he said, how did you beat me here? And I said, oh, well, you know, I didn't know I was in a race. <laughs> and he said, I just saw you in Kakadu National Park. And I wow. said, where's that? <laughs> I said, he said, it's in the Northern Territory. I said, well, I'm adopted. And he said, do you have a twin? I said, not that I know of. And he said, I'm telling you, you have a sister that lives in Kakadu National Park. She was the last person I just saw this morning. And you were the next person. And you walk the same, you talk the same, you look the same. Wow. Obviously, that sparked a lot of interest in my life. I never really connected to my culture or to my people because I just got on with living I had a very few Indigenous friends, but the ones that I did were very close to me. And then I was flown to Darwin as a gospel singer. Mm. And um, I came to Darwin and they took me out to Woogala or Beswick. And I had no idea still, but I felt that I was somewhere close. And I remember just breaking down and weeping for no reason. I thought I was a bit stupid. And all the all the little children coming up and touching my face. Oh, you black fella, you black fella. I'm thinking, oh, I think so. <laughs> yeah, mum, she black fella. Anyway, took off back down south, but just I was homesick. I mm. just kept my heart kept aching and aching. So eventually moved back up here, and that's when I made the phone call to link up. Wow. And how did you have any challenges sort of re-establishing that connection uh, with your culture and with especially that language barrier? Did you have that sort of uh, issues or challenges? Yeah, well, after ringing Link Up, obviously they told me that I have a sister that lives in Kakadu National Park and so I went to meet my sister's family. My sister and I have the same father, so she lives on her mother's country. She speaks fluent Gunjaipmi. Gunwingo and a little bit of Tiwi. So that was the first time in my life I've ever heard Aboriginal people talking language. It was very confronting. I totally felt like, um, you know, one of these things is not like the other ones. You know, I really felt awkward and I had to make the decision. Um, There was many times I thought to myself I just wanted to run back to Sydney because I know how to do that. I don't know how to do this. I don't Mm. know how to... I don't know how to be Aboriginal. Am I? Yes, I am. Wow. So the challenges were huge. Um, I've worked uh, alongside Garma Festival for over, ever since Garma started. It could be 15, 16 years that Garma's been going. And the, the Yolngu families took me in and taught me a little bit of Yolngu Matta. Mm. And then eventually spoke a bit of my sister's language. She was very patient. It's a very difficult language. And today I can sing in 19 Aboriginal languages across the Territory in WA. 
That's excellent. And nowadays you, you sort of spend a lot of your time traveling around the communities and doing music workshops. Mm. Um, how important is that, uh, that, uh, that music for young people especially, getting in touch uh, with that, that music? And, and how important it is that those songs are now recorded? Uh, mm. Because these are songs that have been handed down over generations and, mm. and now are, could be in danger of being lost. Almost. Well, there's two things. There's one is the music workshops with young people, and that's specifically from that region about their stories. So whether I'm working with five-year-olds or to 12-year-olds, it's about where are we, what do you like doing, um, and let's put it into a song. Often there's a health focus, and often um, it might be one of the community members said, oh, we want our young people to have more respect or... Um, and so we talk to the, I talk to the young people about those issues and see how they feel and what they would like to say. So it's, that part of my life is about giving young people a voice through music that is recorded and lots of fun and raising their self-esteem. And the next part was going back home to Borolula and then doing the album all in language and with my grandmothers <laughs> who are older than you, Fred, and on the road with me, 80, 81... <laughs> And I took them to Woodford Folk Festival. They sang in front of 70,000 people. Yeah. Um, that album for us has done many things. It's won many, many national awards. Mm. And that's the Together We Are Strong Together we are album strong. that you released. What it's done in Borolula, they're still um, rejoicing in that they sing the song that you're going to play today. Mm. And often at very significant festivals, it's played at funerals. They were talking about a whole group of people that now have said, this is us, this is who we are, and we can stand strong. One, there was only 22 speakers left of Yanua, and to hear the children and the grandchildren start to sing in Yanua now is just making families very proud. Excellent. And this song that we're going to play now, um, if you wouldn't mind just letting us know a little bit about it. Now, you won the, the NT Song of the Year uh, for this song. Um, what's the message behind this one? It's the story of um, Leanda Widiata, which is We Are the Saltwater People. Mm. And so the traditional song that my grandmothers are singing is about the ocean and knowing the tides and knowing the way the ocean moves. And this is Leanda Widiata. And then my part of the song, because you've got to remember the Yanua was translated back into English and then English into Yanua. And so I, I wrote, we are the saltwater people. We know the sea and the sea knows me. Wow. Uh, thank you very much, Shelley, for joining us on the show. This is Tectonic Youth Radio taking you through.
Wale wale ango, lere anta wiri ara, li anyua. Wale wale ango, lere anta wiri ara, li anyua. Wale wale ango, lere anta wiri ara. 